by Bridget Mananivar and Andrew Kanambura in spite of the softening rates on the parallel market. Prices have shot through the roof in the past few weeks with most basic products now beyond the reach of many. File picture of shoppers in a supermarket a snap survey by the Daily News revealed the prices of basic commodities have gone up by between 2 and 125% within a month, dampening the pomp and fanfare that is normally associated with the festive season. Basic goods such as cooking oil, sugar, rice, meat, flour and milk products are fetching much more than they used to last month, presenting major headaches to the authorities. President Emerson Nangagwa has promised better prospects for the country's economy since being sworn in last month as Zimbabwe's second executive president, within a month after assuming the reins of power on November 24. The 75-year-old ex-guerrilla leader has come facet au face with rampant indiscipline and speculative behavior buffeting the country's economy. The Daily News can report that some of the retailers are taking advantage of the seasonal demand associated with the first of season to hike prices and fatten the pockets. A two kilogram packet of plain flour, which was trading at $1.70 a few weeks ago, is now selling for $1.99, an increase of about 17%. The same quantity of self-raising flour, which used to retail at between $1.89 and $1.99, is now going for between $2.00. 07 and $2.29 in various retail outlets, translating to increases of 9 and 15 percent, respectively. A 2 kilograms packet of ordinary rice that was going for $2.85 by the end of October has gone up by 15 percent to fetch $3.29 while superior quality rice such as basmati and jasmine jumped from around $4 up to as much as $9 over the same period signifying an increase of a whopping 125%. The price of sugar has gone up marginally, from $1.95 to $1.99 for a 2 kilograms packet, while a 2-liter bottle of cooking oil is trading at between $4.35 and $4.90. One liter low-fat and full cream milk products that were priced at $1.19 are now going for $1.49, while another brand that used to go for $1.19 is now fetching $1.35. Meat prices have also rocketed, with commercial beef which cost $4.50 kilograms at the end of October now selling at between $7.50 kilograms and $9 kilogram. The price of super fillet has risen to as much as $16 kilogram. In addition to being in short supply due to the outbreak of avian flu, chicken prices have Spiked from $3.50 kilograms to $7 kilogram. The price of table eggs also surged from $5 per crate to $6.40 per crate over the comparative period. The margins are even worse for imported luxuries such as chocolates, lotions, and sanitary wear products. Confederation of Zimbabwe Retailer CZR President Denford Mutisu said while the price hikes were largely a result of the prevailing foreign currency shortages. Indiscipline has also set in the market resulting in profiteering. Due to the scarcity of foreign currency, local companies are being forced to access expensive money on the parallel market with the additional cost being passed on to the consumer. Labor has not gone up, but the cost of production is going up. As we approach the first of season, our call is that players should desist from price increases based on profiteering, said Mutasu. Mutashu said CZR has noted instances whereby some registered and unregistered retailers are refusing to accept payments affected through mobile money. He said, some claim not to have swipe facilities, while others are putting a cap on the amount of bond coins that could be used to affect payment. The rest has to be of higher denominations. The price increases are certain to add more fuel to the inflation fires. This will put pressure on disposable incomes with workers likely to demand pay increases consistent with the breadline going into to the new year to compensate for the eroded salaries and wages. According to the latest consumer price index data, inflation spiked the highest this year in October. Inflation levels
In many salient sub-indices remained stagnant during mid-2017, compelling government to introduce an additional $300 million worth of bond notes under a standby liquidity support facility in September, with the aim of stimulating foreign exchange liquidity. Core inflation was 2.24% in October, compared to the 0.78% year-on-year reading the previous month. Official inflation figures are now being questioned by independent economists with Steve Hank, an economics professor at Johns Hopkins University in the United States, saying Zimbabwe's real inflation rate is measured by purchasing power parity and taking into account its de facto exchange rate was 313% a year and 112% on a monthly basis. Hank, who has written a book about the country's 2008 crisis, dismissed official statistics that put year-on-year -year inflation at just 0.78% in September as a truly a fantastical piece of artwork. Zimbabwe. Welcome back to the record books you have once again entered the inglorious world of hyperinflation. It is a world of economic chaos, wrenching poverty and death, he said. Its purveyors should be incarcerated and the keys should be thrown away, he concluded, taking a swipe at the then-government of 93-year-old Robert Mugabe who was forced to resign last month. Confederation of Zimbabwe, industry's president, Sifalani Jabangwe, told the Daily News this week that local manufacturers have not hiked prices that much. He said the country's largest industrial representative group was of the view that Prices of imported goods were the ones that have significantly gone up with locally manufactured products. Remaining with a 20% increase margin from comparative prices last year. For the imported goods, it's mainly driven by the shortage of currency. However, with locally produced good, you should look at it differently. Meat, on the other hand, is a different story. We are also trying to understand if the price has been affected by the new regulations for farmers. It could also be the issue whereby some farmers are now asking for half cash payment and half electronic payment, which could be driving up prices, said Jabangwe. Economic analysts are predicting doom and gloom for the consumer unless the authorities adopt stern measures to curb overpricing. There are fears that Zimbabwe could easily slip into another hyperinflationary era reminiscent of the 200,709 period when soaring. Inflation obliterated the Zimbabwe's dollar along with its pensions and savings. To escape hyperinflation which had topped out at 500 billion percent, the country was forced to adopt it the United States dollar. In 2009, along with Britain's pound and the South African rand. But the relative financial stability of the last eight years has unraveled in the last few months as acute foreign exchange. Shortages have led to sharp price increases. Meanwhile money in banks is losing value fast. University of Zimbabwe economics professor Tony Hawkins said blame the foreign currency shortages for the price increases. Most of the goods manufactured in Zimbabwe have an imported component. If you look at money supply on the parallel market, it gives you a better picture of what we are going through, he said. Economist Elliot Lambert parallel market cash traders must be eliminated if prices were to go down, let's get rid of money traders who include big guys in government because they're the ones that access large sums of cash in both United States dollars and bond notes, he said. For goods that are produced locally, there is lack of discipline along the entire chain, from manufacturers down to retailers. Prices are pegged differently, depending on the mode of payment. For example, bond notes have their own commodity value and the US dollar has its own commodity value, said Lumber, referring to the existing 3TA pricing system. Daily News